May I add my welcome to that of Dean Matt and uh, to say how wonderful it is to see uh, the candidates, particularly uh, for ordination as deacons and their trainee incumbents and their very, very special, highly selected family and friends. And a special greeting to those who will be watching this on film. And I hope that you, when you see this, will feel the sense of the Holy Spirit uh, working uh, amongst us all. Uh, very grateful today for all those who've helped us arrive at this moment, particularly the cathedral staff, uh, the vergers and everyone here, uh, our film crew who will record it for us, but also all those who prepared you, uh, the candidates, and Chris and, and Simon and Barbara and Teresa for uh, this moment. Uh, uh, Calvert, our DDO, Bishop Anne sponsoring Bishop, uh, Mark Price, uh, our Director of Ministry, Paul Hinton, who we're very grateful is preaching for us this evening, and everyone of your friends and family who know more about you almost than God, but not quite, remember, and have supported you and encouraged you, maybe challenged you to get to this stage. And we're so pleased to have our training incumbents here, Debbie and Gary and Lucy and Janet, uh, and we're praying that the relationship you've already struck up um, in this unusual summer will grow on from strength to strength in the theme, as you will, who are joining in the service, will find out it's very demanding, but all in God's strength. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope to which we are called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Peace be with you. And also with you. God calls his people to follow Christ and forms us into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. The church is the body of Christ, the people of God, and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, the whole church is summoned to witness to God's love and to work for the coming of his kingdom. To serve this royal priesthood, God has given a variety of ministries. Deacons are ordained so that the people of God may be better equipped to make Christ known. Theirs is a life of visible self-giving. Christ is the pattern of their calling and their commission. As he washed the feet of the disciples, so they must wash the feet of others. Bishop David, I present these persons to be ordained to the office of deacon in the Church of God. Christine Chalmers, to serve in the parish of Holy Cross, Spilsley Common. Simon Cox, to serve in the parish of St. Michael, Boldmere. Barbara Hamilton, to serve in the parish of St. Matthew and St. Chad, Smethwick. Teresa Morton, to serve in the parish of St. Lawrence, Northfield. Archdeacon Jenny, thank you for your presentation. Now ask Calvert, our Director of Ordinance, have those whose duty it is to know these ordinance and examine them, found them to be of godly life and sound learning? They have. Do they believe them to be duly called to serve God in this ministry? They do. Thank you very much, Calvert. Do you believe that God is calling you to this ministry? I do so believe. I do so believe. I do so believe. I do so believe. I invite 
Archdeacon Jenny to confirm that the ordinance have taken the necessary oaths and made the declaration of assent. Bishop David, the ordinance have duly taken the oath of allegiance to the sovereign and the oath of canonical obedience to the bishop. They have affirmed and declared their belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. Those of us who were privileged to witness that did so in glorious sunshine yesterday afternoon in the garden of Bishop's Croft. And there are some bonuses to this extraordinary time that we're living in. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the ministries of angels and mortals in a wonderful order. Grant that as your holy angels always serve you in heaven, so at your command they may help and defend us on earth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this sermon, I'm not going to mention angels, but they're all around us. In the architecture, certainly in the beauty of the windows, heaven touching earth. Those of you who are students of St. John's Gospel and love this Gospel will know that the theme of seeing faithfully is one of the major themes. And four times in this very short passage, we hear about seeing. Jesus sees faithful Nathaniel. Jesus sees potential in Nathanael and tells him what he sees, an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Faithful yet serious Nathanael, who has poured scorn on Jesus' hometown credentials, is blown away by Jesus' knowledge of him. Where did you get to know me? He asks. And Jesus says, when I saw you under the fig tree. The fig tree in scripture is an image of home. 
It's also a place of prayer. Had Jesus seen him praying? But this revelation triggers a new kind of seeing. He sees Jesus for who Jesus is, not someone hopeless from Nazareth, but with radical, fresh eyes, he sees that Jesus is all he has been hoping for as a true Israelite, the Son of God and the King of all Israel. Then Jesus takes this offering of faithful seeing and promises to Nathanael an even greater, expectant and audacious gift of sight, the kind of sight which will see heaven opened. Paula Gooder, in her book, Heaven, which I recommend to you, says this. One of the really important reinterpretations that we find in John 1:51, which talks of angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of God, is the recognition that the gateway to heaven, as Jacob, the deceitful one, remember, in Genesis, that this gateway to heaven is no longer a place, but a person, Jesus, the Son of Man. Thus, though some places may feel like thin places, everywhere in the world, even the most awful places, has the potential to be a thin place made so by the presence of Jesus, who is the true gateway to heaven. There is much in this ordination service which speaks of faithful seeing. Already you have heard the words that you are to make love visible, self-giving visible. But as deacons, you're also called to be faithful in prayer, expectant and watchful for the signs of God's presence as he reveals his kingdom among us. You are called to reach into the forgotten corners of the world that the love of God may be made visible. This ministry of faithful seeing needs many eyes. It is a collaborative enterprise. And isn't that a huge relief to you, dear deacons? Yet already you are bringing insights and seeing things with fresh eyes and working in partnership with your training incumbents and other ministers and colleagues in your parishes. Already, you are seeing heaven touch earth in ministries of profound and tender care, in burden-lifting conversations with the lonely and the isolated, in practical love expressed through food and prescription deliveries, in the stories of closer community and the greater spiritual hunger which this pandemic has made real. Already, you are beginning to serve as heralds of Christ's kingdom as you preach and pray and begin to share God's long story of love and care experienced in your lives. For heaven touches earth in you too. In our prayers and especially in the Lord's Prayer, we are reminded daily that we are to hallow God's beautiful and loving and joyful name and to seek God's kingdom as well as God's will, which is to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We are all, every one of us, called to be agents 
of God's love. Paula Gooder concludes her th thoughts on this passage with these words. Believing in heaven should mean that we carry with us a vision of the world as God intended it to be and strive with everything we have to bring about that kind of world in the places where we live and work. Deacons and everyone here and everyone following this on film, may you see heaven touch earth in the presence of Jesus in places that are thin as well as thick. For there is no place, no person on this earth, where heaven cannot reach. May the joy, may the love, may the grace, and God's playful fun animate you in the power of the Spirit of Jesus. To end, I'd like to say the prayer of St. Benedict, which seems particularly apt today. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, intelligence to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you follow the declarations and then the prayer of ordination, I hope you will find many of the themes that Paul has highlighted for us in his marvelous sermon. Deacons are called to work with the bishop and the priests with whom they serve as heralds of Christ's kingdom. They are to proclaim the gospel in word and deed as agents of God's purposes of love. They are to serve the community in which they are set, bringing to the church the needs and hopes of all people. They are to work with their fellow members in searching out the poor and the weak, the sick and the lonely, and those who are oppressed and powerless, reaching into the forgotten corners of the world, that the love of God may be made visible. Deacons share in the pastoral ministry of the church and in leading God's people in worship. They preach the word and bring the needs of the world before the church in intercession. They accompany those searching for faith and bring them to baptism. They assist in administering the sacraments. They distribute communion and minister to the sick and housebound. Deacons are to seek nourishment from the scriptures. They're to study them with God's people, that the whole church may be equipped to live out the gospel in the world. They're to be faithful in prayer, expectant and watchful for the signs of God's presence as he reveals his kingdom among us. So Chris and Simon and Barbara and Teresa, 
we trust that you are firmly determined by God's grace to give yourself wholly to his service, that you may draw his people into that new life which God has prepared for those who love him. And now, in order that we may know your mind and purpose, we must make the declarations we put to you. Do you accept the Holy Scriptures as revealing all things necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? I, I do so accept them. Will you be diligent in prayer, in reading Holy Scripture, and in all studies that will deepen your faith and fit you to bear witness to the truth of the Gospel? By, By the help, help of God, God I will. Do you believe the doctrine of the Christian faith as the Church of England has received it? And in your ministry, will you expound and teach it? I believe it and will so do. Will you strive to make the love of Christ known through word and example and have a particular care for those in need? By the help of God, I will. Will you be a faithful servant in the household of God, after the example of Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve? By the help of God, I will. Will you endeavour to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ, that you may be a pattern and example to Christ's people? By the help of God, I will. Will you work? with your fellow servants in the gospel, for the sake of the kingdom of God. By the help of God, I will. Will you accept the discipline of this church and give due respect to those in authority? By the help of God, I will. Will you then, in the strength of the Holy Spirit, continually stir up the gift of God that is in you to grow in holiness and grace. By the help of God, I will. Brothers and sisters, you have heard how great is the charge that these ordinands are ready to undertake, and you have heard their declarations. Is it now your will that they should be ordained? It is. It is. Will you continually pray for them? We will. We will. Will you uphold and encourage them in their ministry? In the name of our Lord, we bid you remember the greatness of the trust in which you're now to share, the ministry of Christ himself, who for our sake took the form of a servant. Remember always with thanksgiving that the people among whom you will minister are made in God's image and his likeness. In serving them, you are serving Christ himself, before whom you will be called to account. You cannot bear the weight of this calling in your own strength, but only by the grace and power of God. Pray, therefore, that your heart may daily be enlarged and your understanding of the Scriptures enlightened. Pray earnestly for the gift of the Holy Spirit.
In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For David, our Bishop, Anne, Bishop of Aston, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. For these ordinands called to be deacons in his church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness we may proclaim the gospel of reconciliation to the ends of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and suffering, for the poor and the hungry, and for all prisoners and captives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, for grace to repent and amend our lives, that we may be pardoned and absolved from all our sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering all who have gone before us in faith and in communion with all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. We praise and glorify you, Almighty Father, because in your infinite love you have formed throughout the world a holy people for your own possession, a royal priesthood, a universal church. We praise and glorify you because you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to take the form of a slave. He humbled himself for our sake and in obedience accepted death, even death on a cross. We praise and glorify you because in every age you send your Spirit to fill those whom you have chosen, to equip your holy people for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. And now we give you thanks that you have called these your servants whom we ordain in your name to share as deacons in the ministry of the gospel of Christ, who came not to be served but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Therefore, Father, through Christ our Lord, we pray. Send down the Holy Spirit on your servant, Christine, for the office and work of a deacon in your church. Send down the Holy Spirit on your servant Simon for the office and work of a deacon in your church.
send down the Holy Spirit on your servant Barbara for the office and work of a deacon in your church. Send down your Holy Spirit on your servant Teresa for the office and work of a deacon in your church. Through your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, give these your servants grace and power to fulfill their ministry. Make them faithful to serve and constant in advancing your gospel in the world. May they follow the example of Jesus Christ, your Son, who washed the feet of his disciples and set the needs of others before his own. May their life be disciplined and holy their words declare your love and their actions reveal your glory. That your people may walk with them in the way of truth and be made ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and your Holy Spirit belong glory and honour, worship and praise, now and for ever. Receive this book as a sign of the authority given you this day to speak God's word to his people, build them up in his truth, and serve them in his name. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. We welcome you as fellow servants in the gospel. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you may be rooted and grounded in love. I think that applause matches any hundreds of people uh, who might have been gathered in here. And I hope that those watching at home or wherever you watch will not just clap, but leap for joy at this moment. Now we turn to the uh, communion. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the Spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through your servant, Jesus Christ our Lord. At his baptism, he was revealed as your beloved Son. Coming among us as one who serves, he taught us that the greatest in your kingdom are those who make themselves least and the servants of all. Although he was their teacher and their Lord, he washed the feet of his disciples and commanded us to do the same, that we might reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine out poured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night he was betrayed, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Philip, St. Michael, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper.
the body and blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Lord of heaven, in this Eucharist you have brought us near to an innumerable company of angels and to the spirits of the saints made perfect. As in this food of our earthly pilgrimage we have shared their fellowship, so may we come to share their joy in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As many of you will know, the amens get louder, so pitch your first one appropriately. For it is God who has called you, and he is faithful. May the Father, whose glory fills the heavens, cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. Amen. May Christ, who ascended to the heights, pour upon you the riches of his grace. May the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.